Um, let's talk about it. You use the letters EPO. It's a very long word. You're the expert. Can you tell us what EPO? I mean, we heard you say it with Sugar Shane Mosley, but can you tell the audience what is EPO? You said it's a powerful drug. What is EPO? What are the benefits of EPO? The technical name is erythropoietin, and it promotes the production of red blood cells. And what that does is each and every time that, that a boxer or an athlete takes a breath, you have an area on a red blood cell called hemoglobin. They're like seats on a bus and you can attach, let's say five oxygen molecules. And then those to a, to a red blood cell, like a little bus that transports them down to your muscle tissue and your legs. And it dumps the oxygen molecules and the nutrients. And then it picks up what we call the metabolic waste byproducts like lactic acid, ammonia, carbon dioxide, the metabolic, call it pee pee and poo poo that you want to get out of your system because it promotes fatigue back and then you exhale those out. So literally they call EPO the effects that it turns you into a machine. That means you just simply don't get tired. So when you see these boxers who come on in the second half of the fight and are throwing more punches and maintaining that volume with equal power, it's likely that they're using EPO. And I don't want to get into specific cases, but I see this all the time. And then I look who with their, who they're associated with. And then my best guess is, yes, that, that boxer is using EPO. So to my understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, since we're talking about EPO, EPO basically clears your system uh, between three to four days, but with an IV. And I've heard you mention this years ago. It's it, it can clear your system within 19 hours or some somewhere around that ballpark. Can you well, can you help us understand that part? Protocols depending upon whether you use subcutaneous, that means a small needle in the in the abdomen, as opposed to um, directly injecting it into your vein. If you do the uh, direct into the vein, it will clear in 19 hours. However, the original protocol is. You, you did it three times a week, which was a therapeutic use to boost your red blood cell count. Once you increased it 5%, 10% or whatever the goal is, you, then you would reduce to a maintenance dosage of using it one time a week. But now what they're doing is they microdose. So they take whatever that dosage is that they would use one time a week and they divide it by seven. And this enables them to fly under the radar. And it's very difficult. You don't see that many positive tests. Uh, a positive is somewhat subjective or there, it requires a scientist's interpretation. So there are maybe lots of suspicious looking results that don't actually get tagged as an, as an analytical, adverse analytical finding or positive drug test. So it's, it's a gray area there. You know, do I think that smart people uh, are doing stuff like this? I do. But that's why I'm out there trying to educate, trying to bring people's attention to the truth, what's really going on so that they understand and then we can promote change. Got you. So I wanted to play something that you said a long time ago because you sure. had made a reference. You had made a reference to it uh, in another platform you were recently recently on in an interview. And I wanted to ask you about it for clarification purposes. Um, this is when you were talking about the Mayweather uh, representative. You didn't say name, but representative who emailed you or called you and sought your advice for the Pacquiao fight for drug testing many years ago. I'm not talking about when they actually fought. I'm talking about years and years. Yeah, we're talking about the Mayweather. I, uh, yeah, there was an article about that. And yes, they contacted somebody who contacted me. Yeah. And this is way, this is years before they fought, because I've been following you for a while. So let me play it, because I want the audience to hear you so that when we hear your new uh, uh, interviews, we hear you saying basically the same thing. Uh, so this was dated on February the 26th, 2011, in an interview that you were in. As I always tell my audience, don't take my word for it. Roll the tape. Let me get the volume up so we can make sure everybody can hear uh, what you said then. It, it would certainly be performance enhancing. This has been written up. It's been in the New York Times. This is many, you know, uh, groundbreaking stuff, even though as I talk about me having my ear to the ground, 
I've heard that there have been some elite world champion caliber boxers that have used stem cell injections. There's the danger of me talking about this stuff is then people can use what I say to circumvent the testing. But uh, I'll just give you an example. With cyclists, they can extract their red blood cells, reinfuse them, uh, and, and to maintain the, 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 some of these, I hear they do this even during the Tour de France itself. But the amount of time that it takes to clear your system, if you do it by IV as opposed to subcutaneous, typically in the stomach, it'll clear on average in 19 hours. So if you have to, when you fill out your whereabouts form, say you're going to be somewhere and, and you know at, at a given hour every day, and that time goes by, and then you do an injection of, of EPO, and you only have to do this once every 10 days, let's say, well, by the time you show up at that place where you're supposed to be the next day, it's cleared your system. So can athletes circumvent by using EPO? Absolutely. Piece of cake. So that is what you said then. Um, I stand by everything I said. Right. Now, let's place that in context today. I heard you mention, the fans heard you listen, mention, everybody here that was probably here a little earlier when you first got on, they heard you mention basically the same, you know, the same thing with regards to, let's say, if a fighter is scheduled to test, uh, in Vada's case on their website, eight weeks prior to about, you said Crawford and Spence was 12 weeks prior to their bout. Um, you mentioned Canelo and um, Plant. I think you said about 12 weeks prior to their bout as well. Uh, a fighter can, to this day, can still utilize the benefits of using EPO in those months leading up to the eight weeks prior to their bout and still receive the benefits after, you know, the, uh, the testing has begun and they're actually in the actual bout. So do you still stand on the, that truth that you said? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. All right. And I now, called it earlier a carryover effect. The okay. carryover but effect. understand specifically so you understand about EPO, Red blood cells have a lifespan of about 120 days. So they're always a combination of young, middle-aged, and older red blood cells. So once they build that up, it, it's going to last for a period of time longer, okay? And even if they can continue to do it for maintenance purposes all the way through the fight, however, Vada is very smart, and, and how I know this is because I have fighters that are being tested by them all the time. And let me give you an example. This last fight with Benavidez and, and uh, Andrade, they showed up one time at 6.30 in the morning, and they showed up another time at 10 o'clock at night. So I took pictures and put it on Twitter, showing them that they understand that a lot of the drug use that goes on now in boxing happens at night. All right, hold on. Let's, let me let me get clear. The levels go down, and they will peak in the middle of the night. That's why they they wait until after. It's called a one hour window that you have to give them. So that's nine to ten a.m. You know, on this day you're going to be here. You give them your schedule, but th that doesn't mean they can't come at any time. So they do come. Boy, they were there testing them uh, it, recently in Vegas with Andre. They came right after the weigh in. I mean, they're there when you're completely dehydrated because then the metabolites are more concentrated. So Vada is very smart with the way they collect samples.